Since Minecraft first became public back in 2009, there's always been awful ways to play it. Obviously, if you play Java Edition on a crummy PC or Mac, it's gonna run like piss, but what about the official ways to play Minecraft on platforms that just run like dirt? Well, you'd be surprised how many official ways there are to play Minecraft that just flat out suck. So today I want to look at six of the worst ways to play Minecraft, some of which you can still get your disgusting hands on. Now, a while back I did a video on weird versions of Minecraft, but today I'm only talking about regular old Minecraft. The full-fledged traditional Minecraft experience, not the weird one-offs and developer toys. So without further ado, here are some shitty versions of Minecraft. In late 2016, literally no one asked for Minecraft to come to the Fire TV, and in response, Mojang ported Minecraft to the Fire TV, and it was just Minecraft Pocket Edition on a TV. What the fuck? Why? Well, at the time it was a pretty big thing that TV boxes could play mobile games, and for some reason, people cared about it, because why play Uncharted 4 when you can play Crossy Road, and why play Minecraft on PC or Xbox 360 on your TV when you could play the Mobile Pocket Edition on your TV? Who wanted this shit? Well, actually, Minecraft on Fire TV goes back all the way to September of 2012. Back when Minecraft first launched on the Amazon App Store, it was playable on Fire OS and Android devices. Then two years later in April of 2014, it was then playable on the first Fire TV devices back when those graced the earth. Then for two years, you could just play Minecraft PE on Fire TV through the Amazon App Store. What a disgusting chain of events. But just to make it more disgusting, in December of 2016, Mojang removed Minecraft PE compatibility for Fire TV and instead released Minecraft Fire TV Edition, which, guess what, was just Minecraft Pocket Edition for Fire TV. This was that weird era where Mojang was trying to convert everyone to Bedrock, which at the time was just literally Pocket Edition with a makeover, which it still technically is today. But it wouldn't be right to release the same game on a device it was already on without increasing the price from $6.99 to $20. Previous owners could upgrade for free, but like, what the actual fucking shit? So for someone who suddenly wanted to buy Minecraft from the Amazon App Store on Fire TV, they just suddenly have to cough up $20 because Mojang decided they should? And to charge more for the same, this is beyond fucking stupid. Minecraft pricing could be a video on its own, but they weren't done there. Finally, in March of 2019, they renamed it from Minecraft Fire TV Edition to Minecraft for Fire TV. Jesus fucking Christ, what an incredibly dumb timeline. But anyway, how does it play? Well, if you're talking pre-2016 Pocket Edition, it's literally just Pocket Edition and there's very limited gameplay you can find online. As for the post-2016 Bedrock experience, it's pretty sad. It's the mobile version of Bedrock and defaults to the mobile UI and controls. It sucks. Once Amazon started spreading out its products more, there were certain Fire TVs that didn't support all games. Generally, you had to get the more powerful ones to run the bigger games like Minecraft. But in 2015, Amazon gave the answer to us gamers with the release of the Fire TV Gaming Edition. It came with two free games and even Amazon's very own game controller. Wow, look at that. It's a game controller. The Gaming Edition was a second generation Fire TV with enhanced processing power and even included a whopping two gigabytes of memory. Wow, talk about mind blowing. Anyway, the game runs like cock. It's not breathtakingly horrific, but it's just not good. And how fitting. The UI runs like shit, just like the majority of all Amazon products. They're all designed to be cheap, and if you splurge for the more expensive ones, yeah, it'll run smoother, but at that point, just buy an Apple TV or something that doesn't run bad and have ads littered over every pixel of the UI, which is around the same price as a higher-end Fire TV device anyway. In classic Bedrock style, the main menu can barely run. There's an error message as soon as you boot up, and a message warning you to please move on and stop checking every day. Minecraft for Fire TV ended, please just get on with your fucking life. You can't join realms or servers unless they're running the same version of Minecraft for Fire TV. Except frequent crashes and lengthy loading times, when it comes to Fire TV's UI being implemented into Minecraft, you just can't help but fucking writhe over the brain-dead decision by Amazon to incorporate an Absidy keyboard that goes in alphabetical order. The QWERTY keyboard that we use today was designed specifically for convenience. So with that in mind, here's why Amazon is fucking stupid. I understand that the issue for your fingers getting too close together when typing on a physical keyboard doesn't exist here because it's a digital keyboard, but why the fuck did they think it was smart? to just not use the most commonly used and international standard for the keyboard layout in the world. I go and use all my devices and then come to my piece of shit Fire TV and get thrown off by the change in keyboard. Anyway, it takes like a fucking eternity for the world to get created. You gotta cross your fingers the game doesn't crash while making it. When you first boot in and the world starts loading, the game is super laggy. Obviously, the first thing to get sick about is the short render distance. Mix this with the initial frame rate and you get something Satan would be proud of. After a bit though, it smooths up and becomes more playable. 
Let me talk about the controller real quick. This controller is mostly fine, but the D-pad is mushy, and the bumpers are fucking garbage. They're so hard to press, and when you're playing, it starts to wear on your fingers. There's a microphone button for voice commands, too. The bumpers really do wear you down, but... This controller is actually the second gen Amazon controller. The first gen has more buttons on it, but it's all around better. There's this weird ass button design for the voice commands and the face is flat and overall less ergonomic. Anyway, the only real suckish part of gameplay is the render distance. It defaults to 5 chunks, but depending on the device, it can go up to 10. It's always best to just stick with the default if you favor performance. There's already so many issues with stuttering when building that it's not even worth the attempt to play in higher end features. When it comes to dealing with mobs, it obviously doesn't take very many to slow the game down substantially. You can really destroy the game and get it to crash with little effort. Having different areas loaded in definitely drags the game down a bit and overall, the person using a fire team TV as their main way to play Minecraft is a very depressed one. In March of 2021, Mojang announced that later that year in June, Minecraft for Fire TV would no longer be supported on Fire TV first and second gen devices. Well, does that mean that the entire game is discontinued? The Fire TV Gaming Edition is a second gen device and I don't have any third gen Fire TV so I have no idea. Fuck it, the Fire TV Cube 3rd Gen. It's basically an Alexa that also has a Fire TV. You can really tell that it's smoother than the cheaper Fire TV sticks, but still, I don't see a point in buying this. And no, Minecraft for Fire TV is not compatible with 3rd Gen devices. So why bother specifying the only generations this game was supported on? Just fucking say it's over! Well, back to Amazon with this thing. I love shit resolutions and aliasing. Nothing makes me happier than wasted potential. Look at this giant screen here. Isn't it nice? Think of all the shit you could do with this. Like, nothing. And you could even play Minecraft on it, I guess. Welcome to one of the Wii U's best-selling titles, and I'm not kidding. In December of 2015, after a long wait, 4J Studios finally released Minecraft Wii U Edition. The Wii U Edition is a console legacy version and received the aquatic update as its final update like many other editions. Creating a world is a bit more convenient with the touchscreen. The keyboard pops up on the gamepad so that you can type faster. Something cool about this version is a forgotten feature of the console legacy games custom super flat worlds. There's a lot of customization here that just got shelved and never used again. Creating a world takes a while and the worlds aren't too big. The biggest issue with this version is the visuals. The resolution is just horrible. And while it runs at 720p like the PS3 edition, the aliasing is so much worse. The render distance is decent though. Like other console legacy versions, you can play local split screen multiplayer, but only on high definition screens. You can use the gamepad to play, but you have to use it or the TV. You can't have it show on both, and when you're using one, the other just displays this grass block. Like, what the fuck? What a waste of real estate. You could have had local multiplayer with one player on the gamepad and one on the TV. Who the fuck is responsible for this? No inventory management with the touchscreen. You can tap things, but it's not properly adapted to the gamepad. The playability here is not an issue really. There's achievements, multiplayer, and everything you'd expect. It's just that there's nothing you wouldn't expect. The Wii U needed Minecraft, and this does the job, but it's just a fat fucking waste of potential on top of just being visually and technically inferior to what else is out there. Other than that, there really isn't much unique stuff to talk about. The only part of the Wii U that gets taken advantage of is the typing. I already talked about how you can use the touchscreen to type, but touchscreen typing was already done in the PS Vita. The thing here that's pretty cool is in multiplayer. First of all, you can join a game directly from your friends list, which was mind-blowing for Nintendo. They don't even do that today. Now, when it comes to in-game chat, you can toggle it in the game settings, but if it's off, you can't read any signs, even if the person you're playing with is on your friends list. So you think, oh, well, I'll just turn the game chat on. But the issue with that is that when the game chat is turned on, the Wii U microphone is turned on with it, and you can't turn it off. So if you want to read signs, you have to have your mic on, and if you don't want to have your mic on, then you can't read signs. What the hell is that? With split screen, you can have up to four people on one screen and even take them online. You can use a Wii U Pro controller, a Wii Classic controller, or a Wii Classic Pro. And this is what's cool. The player with the gamepad can type on a sign without disrupting the game for the other players. That only goes for the person with the gamepad though. The in-game chat is nice and shit quality. If I had a Minecraft Let's Play for every time Keemstar killed a dog with his car, 
I would have one Minecraft Let's Play. It's kind of cool being able to talk all through the gamepad, but because the Wii U does such a poor job of filtering out feedback and echoes, it's not the greatest. Of course, Console Legacy also has mini games. It's just like mini games on any other version. There's just barely anyone playing. It feels like there's one game going on in all of America, and all six people playing are in it together. And don't forget the voice chat. It's so great. There's something so uniquely disgusting about the crusty Wii U voice chat. It feels like the same people have been playing this since it came out, and they're all permanently seven years old. Last thing to talk about is the Mario mashup pack. This is awesome. It was crazy to see a Nintendo property have such a massive cameo in one of the most popular games ever. Of course, it was exclusive to the Wii U version, but it was still an exciting moment. Today, this mashup pack has been featured in Bedrock, but it's still exclusive to the Switch version of Minecraft. This was so cool when it came out. So many builds from the Mario games and all the items and mods had new textures, even the grass block on the other screen changes to match. All the music is from Mario 64 for some reason though. It came with its own skin pack too and it was free with the Wii U version. Very cool and a very big map. With the Wii U eShop now closed, the DLC that was once available is no longer up for sale. So sad. The Wii U was discontinued by Nintendo by the launch of the Nintendo Switch. And at the end of its life, Minecraft Wii U Edition ended up being one of the best-selling Wii U titles ever released and was the third best-selling game on the eShop by the time Nintendo announced it would be shutting down. I remember being super excited for this when it was announced and I put so many hours into this version. Even with what it didn't do, it's still fun. At least we'll always have it preserved with physical copies. Minecraft in VR is something much more accessible today than it used to be. If you have any Oculus headset laying around, you can hook it up to your Windows computer and play Windows 10 Edition in VR. If you have a PSVR headset, you can hook it up to a PS4 or a PS5 and play some Bedrock VR. But before you had these modern amenities, you had the original way to play Minecraft in VR. Minecraft Gear VR Edition. Released on April 27th of 2016, Minecraft Gear VR Edition was released for the Gear VR. The Gear VR was a joint effort between Oculus and Samsung for their Galaxy series of smartphones. It's no longer supported, and Samsung hasn't made any phones compatible with the headset since 2019. This thing was probably best known for the game Face Your Fears, which was a series of interactive horror experiences all about facing specific fears, like heights, airplane crashes, clowns, and Stranger Things. But besides Face Your Fears, it was a big deal when the first official VR port of Minecraft was released. For the first time ever, officially, you could enter the world of Minecraft through VR. This was a separate game from regular Pocket Edition for Android, so get excited because you get to spend another $7 on another platform on the same device you already own Minecraft on. I tried for half an hour, but could not sign into my Microsoft account. It's such a fucking pain in the ass. Like the Fire TV Edition, this version stopped getting updates after the Nether update. The title screen here is a 3D version of regular Bedrock. Gear VR Edition started off as just a VR version of Pocket Edition, though. Every platform has their own UI for pop-up keyboards, and the Gear VRs for games is this dark void with a floating keyboard. You have to use the cursor to type, and you can imagine how odd it is during gameplay to pause everything around you and to be put in this void for two minutes while you type. Especially since the game doesn't pause while you're typing on a sign. Anyway, when you boot into a world, you get put in this room with a TV. It's kind of weird. Like, why am I here? This is fucking creepy. The first thing I notice is that the controls are fucked. The triggers just cause the camera to go up infinitely, and the left joystick doesn't work. So, that's not gonna work. I tried over and over, so many different controllers and combinations of Bluetooth, wired, but nothing worked. Xbox, DualShocks, USB gamepads, none of it fucking worked. I couldn't remap to fix it or anything, so after a while, I decided to just map the triggers to the bumpers and the left joystick to the D-pad. Jesus Christ. To jump into your world, you tap the touchpad on the side of the headset, and the first thing you'll notice is that, wow, this looks like shit. There's no 3D effect whatsoever. What the hell is the point of VR if there's no 3D effect? Well, get this. To activate a 3D effect, you have to go into the video settings and manually turn it on. And it's all the way at the bottom. Why is it turned off by default? Another issue is the hotbar. It's so fucking huge. You can't really tell without being in VR, but expect to mess with the hotbar settings because the UI is blocking like a third of your view. There's all these VR camera settings and none of them are perfect. Controlling yourself in VR is always going to feel a bit off. Any combat in building is a lot slower too. It really feels like they should have just made a version of Minecraft specifically for VR instead of shoving Pocket Edition on this thing. That's the issue with Bedrock nowadays. Instead of making Minecraft for a device, Microsoft treats the platform like it was made to run Minecraft. And so you get all these 
shitty, unoptimized versions of Minecraft that get discontinued after a few years because what you're essentially doing is trying to make a mobile game run on everything just for the sake of crossplay, but in doing so, you're isolating your fan base to a permanently unfinished port of Pocket Edition. Anyway, depending on the phone you use, the resolution and performance is different. I'm running this on a Galaxy S8, which came out a year after the release of the Gear VR Edition. It runs pretty well. It obviously has a very piss-poor render distance, and that's honestly the most disappointing part about this. It really limits the realism. Well, that and the screen, which caps at 60 hertz and splits the resolution on one screen. The render distance and 3D effect actually change when you're in menus and your inventory, and it's really noticeable sometimes. The cursor works in a really interesting way. You look where you want to mine, and then start mining. While you're mining, you can look anywhere and still mine until the block breaks. Besides that, the only other pretty cool thing is, well, I guess the swimming looks pretty cool in VR. Minecraft Gear VR was discontinued in October of 2020 after the Nether update and ceased all crossplay capabilities. It was unlisted from the Oculus Store and is still only playable on select generations of Galaxy phones. When Oculus released the short-lived Oculus Go in May of 2018, it acted as a standalone version of the Gear VR and supported a large percentage of the Gear VR's library, but Minecraft was not one of them, and shortly after, when Oculus released the first Oculus Quest, there was support for many Oculus Go games but Minecraft was never included, leaving it stranded on a rather obscure Samsung VR headset with few to no active users left. What the fuck is this? Minecraft New Nintendo 3DS Edition. It's not a console legacy game, even though it's titled like one and shares the same box art as the other Nintendo games. Developed by Other Ocean Interactive, Minecraft came out exclusively for new Nintendo 3DS systems in September of 2017. At the time, it was funny because the 3DS came out at a time where Minecraft literally was impossible to avoid, but there was never any attempt to bring it to it. And in the end, Minecraft came to the Switch before it came to the 3DS. Of course, the big selling point was playing Minecraft in 3D, but it didn't launch with 3D, and Mojang just promised that it would come eventually. There were loads of DLC released for this version, if you can believe that. There were skin packs, texture packs, and even the Christmas mashup pack was released for the 3DS. Of course, now with the eShop down, you can't get any of it anymore, but I was lucky enough to snag everything before it went down. Besides that, there's 59 achievements for us to unlock. This edition has obviously ceased being updated, but in the short span of time it received updates, it got a lot. When it comes to settings, there's very, very little you can mess with. No button mapping, no autosave settings, there's like nothing. Anyway, creating a world is an odd experience. First of all, this game is a little over a gigabyte with all the updates, and worlds can take up a lot of space on your SD card compared to other games. You can only have up to 8 worlds. That's all. It doesn't matter if you have 5 terabytes left on your SD card, you can only have 8. Which does suck if you get into this version since all the worlds are limited. Both the buttons and touchscreen work for navigating menus, but neither feel good to use. And once you get into the game, it's impossible to ignore the graphical disabilities. Ignoring that the game is running on a 240p screen, there's weird graphical glitches. Some of which have always been in the game, and some of which have been picked up over the course of the game's lifetime. You'll see sharp black pixels on your arm, there's clouds with fucked up polygons, some parts of the UI just have random floating pixels, the lighting in the sky doesn't render properly if you look at it in certain directions, and the map fills in very stupidly. The gameplay is normally pretty smooth as long as you're moving in a chunk that's fully loaded in, but when you're running around loading in new areas, the game chugs and it doesn't take much building to slow the game down. Speaking of building, sometimes when mining or placing blocks, the game just freezes for a few frames. The audio is extremely compressed and shitty. With the render distance, obviously it's shit, but it's actually worse than you think. First of all, you can't change the render distance. That's just not an option. Secondly, sometimes when it rains, there's fog. When there's fog, you can see like 10 blocks away and that's it. Third, in other versions of Minecraft with shitty render distances, the closest chunks you can't see are still loaded in. In this game, the farthest block loaded into the game is not very far from you. So imagine this, Sniper Duel, beam me up. These achievements are fucking impossible. It's literally ridiculous. There is no way you can do this without making deliberate structures specifically to achieve these. It's fucking bananas. And then you have certain blocks that don't fully load in unless you're extremely close to them. The best example of this is glass. From not too far away, it just doesn't show up, and you can sometimes just watch it pop in and out of existence. Going around playing the game, it plays. It all feels really small, but it's kind of fun like that. 
When it comes to saving, the game autosaves every 20 minutes, and it's really fucking annoying. It actually takes less time to get a picture taken instantaneously. You can't turn these autosaves off, but it's really not too rare for the game to freeze up and crash, so it's probably for the best to leave it on. The camera is controlled with the C stick, and the L and R buttons act as triggers to break and place blocks. To scroll through your hotbar, you can use the ZL or ZR buttons, the D-pad, or the touchscreen to tap on the item you need. Speaking of the touchscreen, using it to move things around in your inventory actually works pretty well. It's not the best thing in the world, but it definitely makes things quicker and makes me wish we had something like this on the Wii U. Because you have to scroll through your inventory, it slows it down a bit, but if the items were any smaller, then they would be too small. It would have been nice if the inventory was on the bottom screen at all times, but instead that space has been reserved for this built-in map. Maps aren't craftable in this game because of this, but they still show up in chests and natural structures. They don't work though. It's worth mentioning at this point, by the way, that a lot of the things in this game would look really cool in 3D. They never did add 3D though. They said they would and then never did. How sad is that? The only feature that would have justified the existence of this. That sucks. Anyway, when it comes to signs, typing is done with a touchscreen, which is nice. The fun is different though. Well, anyway, halfway through this game's life, multiplayer was added. Yes, that's right, multiplayer. With two new 3DSs and two copies of the game, you can play locally with up to two people. Wow, how about that? You can't get achievements in multiplayer though for some reason. The game pauses whenever the host is loading into something or pauses their game. There's definitely a full experience here, but it really seems shoehorned in. You have texture packs, multiplayer, creative, survival, and even the end. You can beat the game and there are credits. You can mess around with redstone and get a full Minecraft experience. It's just a bit upsetting to see it not go beyond that. But lastly, we have the Mario Mashup Pack. Shortly after the game's launch, Other Ocean threw in the Mario Mashup pack for free because fuck it. And it runs. I mean, it sucks a bit because there's all these huge structures that you can't even fully see because the 3DS can't load all of it in at once. It's still cool to see though, and it's fun to dick around in. Other than that, there's the festive mashup pack which was the only paid mashup pack DLC. This is a classic mashup pack, but it runs into the same issue as the Mario mashup pack. There's issues loading areas, and it's hard to see structures. This version really isn't the greatest, but I must admit I have a soft spot for it. When this game came out, I got it, and since I have put many hours into it, it and I've even collected every achievement which took over four years because of the added difficulty from the 3DS's limitations. The 3DS edition got the discovery update as its last update in January of 2019. Woodland mansions were added but beyond that nothing aquatic update and above has been added. The only thing the 3DS version has that no other version has is the old stone cutter which does nothing. The 3DS also lacks some major things like fireworks and online play. This game originally was a digital exclusive but a physical version was eventually released in North America month later after release. Europe didn't see this game until the following year in 2018, and when they did, it came with a surprise. The limited edition Creeper New 2DS XL. It came out in Japan and Europe and was preloaded with Minecraft. It's a pretty cool console, and it's weird to think that a Microsoft company designed a Nintendo console. Anyway, this version really isn't very stable, and it's graphically disgusting, but I have a soft spot for it. But it's just no way to experience Minecraft. When you have a little stupid child who needs to be kept busy while you smoke, you get them an Amazon Fire Tab. Fire Tabs are pieces of shit. They're the biggest joke on the tablet market, and they all suck without any exceptions. One of my favorite features of the Fire Tab is the ads I see every time I turn it on, and also I like that every background is just an ad. That's really cool, especially for the four-year-old whose parents gave them this thing to play Roblox. Gambling ads are definitely something a dipshit child should be seeing every time they want to play Minecraft. <sighs> Well, in September of 2012, Minecraft Pocket Edition was made available on the Amazon App Store, to the excitement of no one. Now, Kindle Fire owners can take a break from reading books on their device made for reading books and play Minecraft on their device made for reading books. I think this was a very high priority for Amazon because Fire OS is just a modified version of Android, so you can download the Google Play Store to an Amazon tablet and download Minecraft from there if you've already bought it. Same goes for Android, though. If you bought Minecraft from the Amazon App Store, you can easily download it to an Android device. Well, you could, up until October of 2022, but then they stopped letting you do that. 
Very cool, Mojang. Fire tablets are fucking awful. I can't stress that enough. Amazon practically gives these things away because they're making the real money off of advertising to you. You can get these things on Black Friday for practically nothing. I got this Fire Tab 7 on Black Friday for $30 a few years back. And you can get these things right now on Amazon for $40. And wouldn't you know it, you can play Minecraft on it. Navigating this thing fucking sucks. The touchscreen is awful and there's constantly input lag and latency navigating the UI. Now, not too long ago, updates were discontinued for this device, but you can still download it from the app store. And you might say that that's why this doesn't run well, but it never fucking ran well. It's so buggy and never looks good. It crashes and takes so long to load. Once you actually make it in, it runs like ass. First, you're playing on a 600p screen with a frame rate that bounces between 0 and 10. The textures on the blocks are buggy and you get a lot of these glitchy white outlines. The touchscreen is just awful and it's terrible controlling the game with it and a lot of the time navigating the menus requires patience. The render distance is pretty piss and it only stretches between 5 and 6 chunks. You know what? There's really not much to say about this version. It's just all around shit. Doing everything is awful. Even just playing on the tablet sucks. The volume and power buttons are pretty weak and they're right on the side where your hand is so it's not hard to shut the thing off while you're playing. But I guess you can't expect a $30 tablet to run Minecraft well. Even though they sold it anyway, but Minecraft is still supported on Fire OS. The Fire HD 10, Amazon's premier tablet that'll set you back 150 bucks. This thing still supports Minecraft and its updates, but does it run any better? Hardly. I got this thing on sale for 130 bucks, and it's definitely a nicer screen. It's much bigger, the UI is smoother, and the touchscreen is better quality. The issue is, you're still playing on a cheap tablet, and the game just runs very poorly compared to your latest Android phone or iPad. Obviously, this is a budget tablet, and the only people playing on this are going to be people who can't afford anything better and little shithead kids, but that's precisely why it's on this list of worst ways to play Minecraft. Don't play Minecraft on a Fire Tab, it fucking sucks. Probably the most long and pathetic life of any version of Minecraft is Minecraft for Windows Mobile. First of all, Windows Mobile. Now, a lot of people tend to dislike Windows Mobile, but frankly, I actually enjoy it. It's a really familiar feeling, and it really does feel like a mobile version of Windows. But there's some things about it that piss me off. Instead of a tabs button like on every Android, Microsoft had to put in a search button so that you can do a Bing search at any time. Just pressing the button gives you access to Bing, where you can use Bing to search Bing. Please use Bing. To access tabs, you hold down the back button, and then for fuck all reason, you swipe down to get rid of the tab. Now that's fucking stupid. That's just a pathetic attempt to be unique. Fuck you, Microsoft. I changed my mind. Couldn't just swipe up like on every other operating system. The only thing that's kind of cool is this virtual nipple here that lets you move your cursor left and right while typing in case you misspell something. Anyway, the first version of Minecraft here was released for Windows Mobile 8.1 in December of 2014 as a Windows port of Pocket Edition, and then it was ditched in November of 2016. Then, a few months later in February of 2017, they revived it, but only for Windows 10 Mobile, and it was bedrock now. Then, in October of 2020, they said fuck it again and just stopped updating it. They ripped it off the shop and it's another version you just can't get anymore. If you snoop around online, you can find a download, but since Windows phones are such a left-behind technology, getting this thing on a Windows phone is by no means a simple task. First of all, if you have it in your purchases, you have to find it in your purchases list in the Microsoft Store and install it from there. Okay. But if you have a Windows phone with less than 2 gigabytes of RAM, you're gonna have a lot of trouble creating a world and should be ashamed of yourself. As far as gameplay goes, it's fine, it's pretty laggy and the render distance varies by device, but constantly the sensitivity is so fucking high, like what the hell? As far as multiplayer goes, you can't play with any other versions or platforms other than what you're on, and you can play locally with up to 5 people on a server. It's just sad. If I were subjected to playing Minecraft like this back in the day, I would have dismembered myself. Microsoft is a bitch for trying over and over to shove shit on their buggy platforms, and it serves them right that their buggy version of Minecraft on a buggy platform with a buggy, shitty operating system made by a company whose most profitable asset is your data failed so grossly that it's barely documented at all or known about. Fuck you, Microsoft.
So let me start by saying that I understand that this game runs differently depending on which model Chromebook you use, and I understand that at the start of the video, I said that you can get Minecraft to run like shit if you have a piece of shit to run it on. But let me show you why Minecraft for Chromebook is proof that there is no god. First of all, this Chromebook I'm using is not old and shitty. This is the most recent Dell 2-in-1 Chromebook that meets all requirements to run Minecraft as listed on their website. What the fuck were they thinking shoving Minecraft onto a Chromebook? I'm sure we've all had experiences with Chromebooks, and I'm willing to bet that they were all anywhere from bad to mediocre. These are budget machines. This is either what you get when you can't afford a MacBook or what your school gets when they have to provide you with a laptop. There are so many companies out there that make Chromebooks, but they all have something in common. They all provide the shittiest way to play Minecraft. First of all, you are running the mobile version of Bedrock. What you're playing is Minecraft for Android, but guess what? You gotta pay 20 bucks for it. Yeah, I'm fucking serious. If you want to play Minecraft for Android on a Chromebook, you gotta cough up 20 bucks. But don't worry, if you already own Minecraft for Android, it'll only cost you $13 to upgrade. What the fuck kind of pricing is that? I thought I've seen some fucked up pricing for Minecraft in the past, but $13 to play Minecraft on a Chromebook. Who thinks this shit up? And Mojang has some balls charging $20 for this game standalone. Jesus Christ. Minecraft for Chromebook came out June of 2023 and can only be a result of Mojang being bored and wanting more money. Picture this. You're playing the best-selling game of all time in all of its modern glory on a device designed to not be powerful. Congratulations, you may now shoot yourself. This thing barely boots. Look at this shit. It just won't load the fucking menu. Just don't make this. If you can't make a good game, then don't make it at all. And if this is how well it runs the menus, imagine the gameplay. It's unbelievable. This is fucking disgusting. This pisses me off. Never turn the render distance up on a Chromebook. It just makes it completely nauseating. Now, when it comes to controls, you can use the keyboard and trackpad, or if you have a two-in-one, you can use the touchscreen. The keyboard and trackpad combo is okay. It works like it does on other versions with trackpads. You push down to mine and you push down with two fingers to place. The difference of course being that Chromebook trackpads are much lower quality than something you would see on a MacBook or a Microsoft Surface. Now, a lot of Chromebooks have two-in-one options that let you fold them into a tablet, and most of them have touchscreens anyway, but let me tell you, playing Minecraft with a touchscreen on a Chromebook is such an awful experience. Since this version has not been abandoned yet, you get access to all the new fancy touchscreen controls which mostly suck. The only one I go for is the classic D-pad and button, but first, let me just say that it's very clear that Chromebook touchscreens are obviously not designed to be used for mobile games. Most of them smudge very easily, and many of them are made with plastic or glass that doesn't track your finger too precisely, so with every Chromebook, it's just a hit or miss. Luckily, in my case, the touchscreen isn't too bad, but it isn't good, and the main reason for that is that Chromebooks generally are not very light compared to, like, a tablet. When you're holding this big fucking screen, it's not just that it's hard to reach parts of the screen, but the thing is heavy. Laptops are meant to be put on your lap. Holding this thing up to play is awful. Who the fuck thinks of this shit? And all this for it to run like ass. Then you can say that you just gotta have a more powerful Chromebook for it. This thing is not cheap. I'm using the most recent line of Dell Chromebooks, a Chromebook that costs almost $400 after tax. And this is how it's running? And I'm lucky here that I can use the touchscreen and trackpad this well. Like I said, every Chromebook is just a hit or miss because they're all different and shitty in their own ways. You don't know what the hell you're gonna get. And even with that, Mojang still thinks it's fair to charge 20 bucks for this pile of shit. I mean, what am I gonna do? Build a thousand dollar PC so I can run Chrome OS on it so this'll run well? No, just don't fucking release it for Chromebook. It doesn't work and it sucks. Don't charge people $20 for the chance to play shit. There's bugs everywhere. At one point, I got this glitch where the loading bar was permanently stuck on the screen and I had to restart the game. Chunks have a lot of trouble loading in. The UI slows down when you do anything and the game can barely handle playing online. It's just all around shit and by far the worst experience I've ever had playing Minecraft. Everything about this just pisses me off. I fucking hate it. And if you were wondering how the Education Edition runs, it runs just as shit. Stay away from both. There's a lot of really shitty ways to play Minecraft, and I'm sure we all have an experience with one. Mojang is sometimes worse than Google when it comes to discontinuing products. The amount of versions of Minecraft that have been killed off is a great way to visualize how poorly Mojang does managing software. Of the seven games I just showed you, two of them are still supported and one of those just came out. It's one thing for a game to be discontinued because it's on passing hardware, that's fine. You can't support generational hardware forever. But when you're just throwing Minecraft on anything because it runs, and then dis 
discontinuing it when development becomes a burden and you already made all the sales you're gonna make out of it, that's fucking stupid. In trying to make Minecraft available on as many devices as possible, you end up isolating player bases when you decide to abandon whatever hardware they choose to play on. And when your advice on transferring worlds is to subscribe to your shitty realm service and upload the world then download it to whatever device you want, just go fuck yourself at that point. Minecraft is running into the same issue Facebook is, where they're literally just running out of markets they make money on, so they're just trying to get money anywhere they can, even if it's just from selling the game again to people who already own it. If at the end of the day you play Minecraft on a shitty device, go right ahead, but don't be surprised when you see a message warning you of the end. What was once a game made for the players is now a game made for the investors. I'm Bearman, and I've been wasting your time. Thanks for watching.